Hey guys, how's it going? It's finally here. My brand new ZWO ASI 2600 MM Pro. And this thing is a beast. Right off the bat, I can tell you that it's at least feels double as round as my old ASI 1600 MM Pro, which was an incredible camera. And in my personal opinion, this thing kills that camera. And I'm gonna go over a few of the specifics why. The first thing that I'm gonna go over is the resolution. Now, resolution isn't the king in astrophotography, but it definitely helps, and it helps bring up the megapixel on the actual image. Um, this camera is 6,248 by 4,176 resolution, which is definitely a bump above the ASI 1600, which was around 4,000 by 2,000, or somewhere in that range uh, for resolution. So that's an immediate upgrade right off the bat, just the first thing you get. This also has 16-bit ADC, which is uh, four steps, four bits better than the 12-bit that is on the uh, ASI 1600. This helps with your overall image quality and really makes an improvement. The next thing that I'll go over is the full well capacity. This camera has a full well capacity of 50,000E versus the 20,000E that's on the 1600. The reason that I keep referencing the 1600 is because I believe that this is the answer. This has an ASP, APCS sensor, ASP-C sensor, um, which is close to full frame. And I can even give you, a, give you a shot of that real quick. That's what that looks like right there. Hopefully the camera is able to pick that up for you, which is awesome because unlike the ASI 1600, which has a cropped four third sensor, this allows you to have a much wider field of view on your telescope which allows you to get more deep space objects and just have a better overall image. The next thing I would like to go over is the uh, QE rating on this one, which I believe helps with the kind of darkness of an image. Um, on this camera, it's actually 91%. On the 1600, it's 60%. So the QE rating is a lot higher on this camera. Um, the, another comparable point is the pixel size. On this camera, the pixel size is 3.76 microns. On the 1600, it's 3.8, so it's pretty comparable in pixel size. It's almost a negligible difference. Um, so if you could use a 1600 with your previous camera, this camera will work just as well. Um, the only thing you have to look out for is adapters and different things to make sure that this larger sensor uh, is efficiently covered. Um, the ZW does not have an M48 tilt plate, or yeah, tilt plate on there. Um, it's not out yet. So once that's out, I'll be switching it out. It does come with an M42, which is kind of a negative on the camera. But if that's the only negative that you can really see, it's not a problem with me. Um, the other kind of negative that this camera has versus the 1600, which it's kind of replacing, is the FPS. Um, so this is not your camera for lunar or planetary. This camera has an FPS of 3.5 or so. The 1600 had 23 FPS. So with this camera, you really can't do too much planetary unless it's kind of still image or something like that. You, with that low FPS count, you really can't do those two things. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to get a quick video out and show it off. Um, a big shout out to Zoltan at 365 Astronomy, which is in the UK. Um, he really helped me get this quick, he get this quick to me. Um, there's a huge shortage right now just because of um, COVID-19 and the Sony sensor, they kind of slow down their production on monochrome sensors, uh, much to the dissatisfaction of the astro community, but they don't make as many, so they're not in as abundance as they normally would be. Um, and this is a really popular new camera. Um, so I highly recommend it. Uh, I will be taking images later this week. I'll try to put out another video showing my first light. Um, another real quick little tidbit about this camera is it doesn't have any amp glow. Uh, I would still recommend taking darks for hot and cold pixels, but that no amp glow is something that you don't have to battle with at all in your images. Um, and again, with that full well capacity that allows more light to actually hit the sensor um, and the photons to actually penetrate the sensor and that QE value of 91%, which allows the full wavelength of the light to come through, you really are getting a lot better performance from this camera versus something like the 1600. Um, the other thing to talk about is the price. This camera is around $2,500 versus the ASI 1600, which is around $1,200. Um, so you are paying almost double for this camera. Now, depending on what region you're in or 
what supplier you get it from, that price could change a little bit. But I believe with all the specs that are put into this thing and the newer sensor, the full frame or almost full frame size, um, it definitely is a kingpin and will be a staple in the monochrome um, aspect of astrophotography. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Um, like I said, in my next video, I'll be showing off my flats, my darks, and first lights, and hopefully an image for you guys. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. And if you could, like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one.